The Lord spoke to me uh, yesterday and told me something amazing that he wanted me to teach on today and speak about today prophetically. Father, give us strength and energy and help from you to cause this thing that you've wanted to tell your people to be empowering and clear in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for utterance in the Holy Ghost. All right, I'm going to title this Successful Spiritual Warfare, Volume 2. And uh, the, the, um, the subtitle is The Lord Grants Us His Protection. Very interesting that God would have me, you know, would speak to me this, but he is exactly what he said. Just being perfectly obedient to what he said. Let's look at Psalm 91. And I thought, I, I don't know if it's in the Psalm 91 or where it probably is. I don't want to read the whole thing, but I want to just make a statement that I, that I heard in the Spirit. You know the scripture that says, the scripture that says, uh, he, he, he puts us under his feathers, under his wings. What is that? De- what is that uh, denote? What is that? Where does that come from? It comes from being close to Him. All right. So I want to say that first. Now let's look at Psalm ninety-one, one. It said, "He or she." Okay, this is for people. And there's two kinds of people. There's he and there's she, and that's all there is. Thank you very much. The way God made it. He or he or he. <laughs> She or he. He or she who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Stop there. It goes on to say, they will say of the Lord, he is my... Okay, great confession. But you know what? Let's stop there. He hides us under his, his, his wings, his feathers, whatever, you, you, whatever it says. And then he, that, he or she that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. How does that happen? By being close to him. By being close to him. By being in his will, in his plan. Did you get it? Now read the rest of Psalm 91 in your own time as a homework assignment. And claim all the things that are in there. I want to go to... uh, I want to go to uh, another verse of scripture here. Okay, Daniel chapter 4. I'll get there in a second. There's something else I want to look at before that. Uh, Where is it now? Psalm 63. I'll just make mention of it again. Talks about the wicked. When he says, in, in the ninth verse, he said, those that seek to destroy the life of someone good or to hurt them, they'll go down into the lower parts of the earth. He said they'll even become food, food for jackals. Jackals are the wild dogs, you know, those things like, and even like hyenas or whatever you want to say. Now, here, here, here's what I wanted. To, here's what I was looking for. It's, uh, okay, Daniel 4, I'll get back to that. Here's what I wanted. It's where Jesus said, Jesus said something powerful here. In Matthew chapter, uh, yep, Matthew chapter, ooh, ooh, ooh. Fifth, Matthew chapter 15 And the eighth verse, he said, these people, talking about certain people, draw near to me with their words, their mouth, whatever. And they try, they act like they're honoring me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. So in vain they worship me, or whatever they try to do, because they make the things of men talks about doctrine, you know, the commandments of men. Ah, That's something to do with uh, temple life or whatever. But just let me say in the personal life, they they do wicked things that they think are okay. And God says that that makes them a criminal, basically, and it invalidates them from receiving any blessing from the from the Lord. And he said, whatever they do, acting like they're coming toward me, it's in vain. Can you imagine that? 
Listen to the thread and the, and, the, and the wave of the Holy Ghost here as he's speaking. Psalm 91, 1. He, did, he or she, did, he, did, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Stop there. What is the shadow of the Almighty? Where is the shelter of the Most High? What is it? It's the will of God for us. What he wants us to be doing, that's, that's it. That's where it is. Is, is, is. is God walking on the earth as a physical person? Yes, by the Holy Spirit, but it's a, bit on, it's a bit beyond amazing that people would actually know the physical presence and how he would look, you know, how his, the physical realm of, of representation of stature of the, of the spirit, of the spirit of the living God. Nobody knows that. Even great preachers, even anointed men, they, they don't know how he looks. You know, I know a man of God had a visitation and he saw this very well uh, coiffured man, handsomely dressed with a tuxedo, really, beautiful, really amazingly handsome, everything impeccably excellent. And he, he thought that was the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit laughed at him and said, I just made myself into that image to please, to, to show myself to you because I know you'd like You'd be impressed by that, uh, by that look, but I can take many shapes. So we can't go to, you know, break it down to how does God look? Where is he standing? Nobody knows. Even great people don't know. So let's not try to get over into that, you know. Everybody's mocking these days this, this woman with uh, certain colored hair. who they, they think she's a prophet, and uh, she says she talks about, you know, the roller coaster rise and what we're going to be eating in heaven. And she goes to heaven like several times a day and everybody's like, sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she said about 17 times that Trump was going to be back in office back in uh, uh, 2020. She gave dates, you know. It never happened. So, I mean, that should tell you something right there. Anyway, so you could try to depict and describe and get over into a side thing about, you know, how does God look? How does heaven look? Yay, that's, you know... If an accurate description could come of it, it's encouraging to us. But guess what? One day we'll be there. But right now, where is the secret place of the Most High? Where is the shadow of the Almighty where we're to abide? Where is the will of God? Where can we worship God? And it's not in vain, but it's going to produce something for us. Jesus said, your lips honor me, but your heart is far from me. So where's our heart? Are we in the plan, the will of God? Do we want to do the will of God? This brings about his protection. Go to uh, Daniel chapter 4. This is amazing. My eyes fell on this. The Holy Ghost just gave me this. Nebuchadnezzar's second dream, Daniel chapter 4. Peace be multiplied unto you. This was Daniel writing this. And... Uh, how great are his signs, how great is his dominion from generation to generation to his own people. How mighty are his wonders, you know. And then now it goes on. Nebuchadnezzar the king to all peoples, nations, and languages that dwell on the earth. Peace be multiplied to you. So was this actually Nebuchadnezzar talking or was this Daniel's script of Nebuchadnezzar's, Nebuchadnezzar's testimony? However it was, it's still amazing. And he said this, I, now here, here, here he's talking in verse 4, I, Nebuchadnezzar, was sleeping in, a, in the house and flourishing in my palace, and I saw in a dream which made, made him afraid, he said, and the thoughts that he had on his bed and his visions in my head, they troubled, they troubled him, troubled me. This was his testimony. Therefore I issued a decree, oh, come on, let me get to it. Oh, the magicians and the, all these other people, the, the soothsayers came and told, he told them the dream, but they couldn't, they couldn't make known to him the interpretation. Now, Joseph was another one that interpreted a dream and got promoted, and Daniel was one that had great wisdom and he had the Spirit of God. He was able to even explain to the king some things, so I want, but I want to get to a point here. Skip down. Belteshazzar, that was one of the names of, uh, well, the chief of the magicians. It 
So the dream that I had, I need to have its interpretation, the king was saying. And he was looking and he was looking, and this is what he saw. He saw, listen to this. The tree in the midst of the earth and the, uh, and the height was great and the tree grew and became strong and the height reached to the heavens and he could see to the ends of the, all the earth and the leaves were lovely, the fruits abundant and in it was food for all and the beasts of the field were able to take shade under it. This is how great this tree and this blessing was. And the birds of heaven dwelt in the branches and all flesh was fed from it. Imagine that. This was a picture that God gave to Mr. Nebuchadnezzar of a possibility of something great that could be, but it wasn't to be. Watch next what happens. So he saw the vision, and then all of a sudden he saw a watcher, a holy one, coming down from heaven, and he cried out with a loud voice and said this, Thus, this, chop down the tree, <laughs> this is scary, and cut off all its branches and strip off the leaves and scatter its fruit. And then he said, uh, let the beast get out from under it and the birds from off of its branches, off of its branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump and roots in the earth and bind it with a with a with a, a band of iron and bronze to the tender grass of the field. Let it be wet with the dew of heaven. Oh. This decision was made by the watchers, by the decree of the watchers, and the sentence of the word of the Holy Ones. And in order that the living may know that the Most High rules in the, in the kingdoms of men and gives it to whoever he will and sets over it the lowest of men. This dream I, Nebuch King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now you built the Shazar declare its interpretation. And then Daniel goes on to explain it all. And we could read that further. Daniel chapter 4. Still there. tree you saw that had its lovely branches and leaves and fruits and all the animals there. He said, it's you, O king, that have become big and strong, for your greatness has grown and your dominion to the ends of the earth. But inasmuch as the king saw the watcher and the holy one come down from heaven, said, chop down the tree and destroy it, leave his stump and his roots in the earth, bound with a band of iron and the bronze and the tender grass of the field, let it be up with the dew of heaven, let it be... Okay. It says these watchers and the voice of, the, uh, of uh, the decree of the Most High will drive you away from what is good and make you eat grass with the oxen. They shall wet you with the dew of heaven and seven times shall pass over you till you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. So God can give something great and show something great but to the wicked, they're not going to get to enjoy it until they repent. Are you seeing that? So what is the secret place of the Most High? What is abiding under the shadow of the Almighty? What is it all about? It's, it's, it's being in the will of God, serving God and pleasing God. I tell you, there's something about being righteous that will cause God to grant his protection to us. And I'm reminded of that, that again, what I said from the first uh, opening statement. This scripture that talks about the, the, covers us with his wings and the feathers and we're in, we're in the secret place and we're under the shadow of the Almighty. What is that? It's the, the presence of the Holy Spirit. You know, 
there's ways you get the, the power of the Holy Spirit to live with you is like you, you could be baptized in the Holy Ghost, right? You can uh, you can walk with God till He wants to manifest His presence with you. And some people don't, you know, they're good people, but they don't really have that infilling of the Holy Spirit. But then there's people that are supposed to, but they've driven Him away. So the presence of God does what? It causes His protection to be over us. Nothing can penetrate the glory of God, you know, when we're in His presence and in His will. There's nothing that could stop the plan of action that God has. So what is the Lord trying to get across to us here? When we're in His plan, nothing in this world can stop us. Nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. <laughs> Keep thinking of that sound bite. I said that on Friday. Friday's message is coming out. Uh, we did a live. It's going to be released. It's called The Money is Coming. Volume 66. Very brilliant. Uh, about an hour. I was going to say a few minutes, but it's about an hour. And the Lord was speaking about how he wants to bless us financially. Put your hand and say, Lord. I'm ready to receive all that you have. You're not supposed to be broke. You're not supposed to be destitute. You're not supposed to be struggling. You know, who, you know who's supposed to have that? The ones that the jackals are going to eat. The ones that cause uh, damage to, to certain people. When the ones that, the ones that uh, cause trouble for others, stress and harm, they're going to pay for that. And, and where's the protection of God? Never upon them. We, we don't even care about them. We just care that they just get washed away with any wave out to sea and just, and just disappear. You know? And I want to say this. I want to say this again. I said this last Sunday. It was last Sunday, I think, was uh, volume one of this. I called it Successful Spiritual Warfare, volume one. And I was going through scriptures about, about the blessing for the righteous and the judgment for the wicked. And the Lord was saying, you know, that he, how he's going to cut wicked people off. I want to say this. To every wicked person that has any kind of wrong, uh, evil agenda to do anything adverse uh, concerning us, the judgment and the power of God is going to come to them and strike them down and cause them to be as nothing. Isaiah 41.11 again says, um, They'll be ashamed and disgraced that hate you. And those that want to strive with you, they'll perish. And in the middle, he said, you'll look for them and not find them. They'll be washed away. The righteous shall flourish and the wicked shall be cut down. That's the reality of how it is. Isaiah 62 said something powerful. Let's look at that, verse 1. For Zion's sake, I'll not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I'll not rest. Well, this is for God's people. Even though it's literally for the city of Jerusalem, but it's also for all of us all over the world that believe in Christ. Because when we're Christ, we're Abraham's seed. Galatians 13 said, 3, Galatians 3, 13 said, Our righteousness this is the cry of God and the cry of the prophet Isaiah and the, pri the cry of the prophet Thomas Manton IV that we will not rest until the righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation is a lamp that burns. The Gentiles will even see our righteousness and all the kings will see our glory. God's glory upon us. And we'll be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord will name. God will give us a new name. And he'll lay a crown of glory. Wow. I'm reading it further. It says, we shall be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord. You see how that matches what I was saying before the Holy Ghost is just having me walk through the scripture here. 
You see, I wasn't planning, that one was not in my notes, I didn't plan that one at all. You see how this works? Will be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord. How does that happen if God doesn't have us? We're not going to worry about the people that say, uh, like Jesus said, they come to me with their lips, but their heart's far from me. Why? Because their, their character and their actions uh, make them out to be literal criminals. What does the scripture say in Revelation? I think it's tw chapter 21. It says, the abominable, the sorcerers, the effeminate, meaning the, you know, people with illicit lifestyles, the liars, the drunken, the, the, the whoremongers and the what? The, the idolaters and the sorcerers and the liars. He said all liars. That scripture is frightening. All liars will have their place in the lake of fire. There's people, I, I, found, one, I found one fool out, you know, we discovered. Complete liar. Lied, lied, lied. Everything a lie. It's unbelievable. It's unfathomable. And let me tell you something. God is great at bringing his judgment. I say this as his prophet. This is the word of the Lord for the year. And, uh, and I'm, I'm hearing the concurring word from other voices. They're, say, they're echoing the same thing that God had me say from, the, from, from New Year's Eve. Even the week before, Christmas week, I was somewhere and I started to say it then on the 24th of December, which was the Sunday, the day before Christmas. Christmas uh, la this last year was on a Monday. And then the following Sunday was the 31st, was New Year's Eve, was, the, was a Sunday. And then the 7th was the next Sunday. And then now was what? 14th and the 22nd and the uh, 15th and the 22nd and the 29th. Okay, and, and like every week the Lord is, but from the beginning of the year, before the beginning of the year, around Christmas time, the Lord started to say, this is going to be the time of manifestations of my promises. In fact, uh, I think I started it right around New Year's, the day before New Year's Eve, which was Saturday night. That was the 30th of December. I did a broadcast and the Lord began to say, the right, again, the right, and I, pre and I was preaching on this before, like the last month or two. The righteous shall flourish, but the wicked shall be cut off. And God said it's going to be a time of manifestation of his promises to us, his righteous, the things that we've been waiting for to see that we haven't gotten yet, they're coming in Jesus' name. I'm taking mine. I don't know about you. You could say amen or, or ouch or whatever. Or you could say yeah, or you could just look, look blinking. It's okay. But it's time to rise up in, in expectation for what the Lord has given us to do. He keeps saying it. And I prophesied again two nights ago on Friday night. The Lord said, the money's coming. Volume 66. Can you imagine that I've done 66? 66. 66. Messages in a row. 65 in a row. And then many months later, I picked it up again. Many, many months later. And the Lord reactivated the message. And I'm finding some... Uh, original recordings of some of the ones in that series, The Money is Coming, and I reposted them. They're on the social media right now, Man, especially on Facebook. You can see it there. And uh, the money is coming. It's a prophetic word. The Lord, the Lord kept saying that, you know. So, so the Lord is, uh, is wanting to manifest his promises to us. This is the word of the Lord. But in the same time, he's blessing his own elect, including myself, including you yourself. If you're good, he's also going to be judging the wicked. Father, we thank you that those that have done evil, I mean, they're just arrogant and, and, and just pathetic on how they think they can do evil things and, and literally, literally, you know, like, like it's okay, like it's okay. It's not okay. They will be cut down and brought to nothing. And this is the way it's going to be. In fact, many will just be, they'll perish. They, they won't even make it to another season of life. And we say a big amen to that. Why? Because uh, they, you know, they, live, they live to cheat. They live to lie. They live to steal. They live to con. You, you know the word con. You like to use that a lot in Africa because it seems like it's a very prevalent thing. And that's just like, you know, something, the normal thing, corruption and con. 
Corruption is when people are stealing things illicitly from government funds or whatever. Uh, uh, but mostly in the government arena. But in the, in the private sector, it's like conning. They con each other. You, you're a con man. You're a devil. You're going to go to hell. And if you repent, your business. If you don't, your business. And the damage you've done to others, if you think that you won't drink of the cup of the wrath of God, you're a complete fool because this is going to be the day and the hour of manifested judgments. The judgments upon the wicked are going to come forth. Even in the church, you know. Let me tell you something about church people. Church people really don't dance around with people in the world. You see people in the world... You don't want nothing to do with it. I saw a new screen go up on the street. You know, they put up those big uh, screens with advertisements and all that. And I thought, what's the advert? And I just got excited about it. I thought, I'd like to have my stuff on there. What can I produce that could be like a, a video that, or an advertisement that you know, everybody could look at? And you just think, well, all these people in other religions, they're deceived, people that are evil crooked criminals, filthy heathens. You know, well, somebody said one way to call an atheist, when someone says they're an atheist, it really means that maybe, maybe they're a Satanist. <laughs> you know, maybe they're into all kinds of secret other things or whatever, and they say, well, they just don't believe in God. No, everybody believes in God somehow. It's almost, it's almost laughable to think that someone wouldn't believe in God you know, first of all, the Bible says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. So right away, you know that the person is a fool. You know, but if you look at all the beauty, the beauty of crea creation, you have to... <laughs> yeah. You have to know that God is real. I just found some colorful birds in another post, and I put it on my Facebook page. Wow, can you imagine? Look on my Facebook page, you'll see these birds. Was that an accident, how they got so beautifully painted like that? And even in the DNA, the creator doesn't have to come back down and take his, uh, a mold or take a brush and, or like dip them in something and make the colors. They just like give birth to the next one uh, through the egg or whatever. And then that one will come up with these beautiful designs on it because God put it in the pattern of reproduction, yeah? So that didn't come from a big bang or evolution or evolving or, you know, some explosion or some primordial slime and some chemical reaction that made some stars blow up. And then, you know, how does something blow up into an explosion and then it ends up being beautiful creation? You know, even to believe so, such, you, you'd have to be very, very, uh, very deluded in the head. I mean, there's just, there's just no way that that makes any sense. So where is the glory? Where is the protection? Where is the power? Where is the creativity? You know, where is the blessing? Where is the money? Where, where is the good life? In the will of God. I gave you four places in Scripture. Matthew 15, 9, 8 and 9. Don't come to, don't come to him worshiping in vain. Right? Nebuchadnezzar saw this beautiful splendor of glory, and Daniel even said, Belteshazzar called him there, and said, said to him, uh, This was actually you and your kingdom and your, the, the power that you had. But, but because you were wicked, God spoke from heaven and said, Cut it all down, take it away. <laughs> Read that in Daniel chapter 4. Take it all away and you'll be down on your fours, all fours, on the ground, kneeling down, eating grass like the oxen, like a complete fool that's lost his mind. Nebuchadnezzar experienced this. The great king became like a lowly animal on the earth because of his wickedness. So you wonder why things are not good in your world? You know, and then there's things that you're hoping for that you haven't seen yet. You have to stand in faith, but yeah, 
you have to stand in faith and expectation to know and believe that God's going to give those great things to you. And he is. And he keeps saying that he's going to. He keeps saying it prophetically. However, you have to increase your righteousness. Increase your faith. Push yourself to believe. I heard a, a, a great uh, inspirational, motivational, I don't know what you'd call him, uh, success coach, trainer. And he was pushing people to like write down victory things, like what they want in their life, then assess yourself. I thought, this is good. And the masses of people, whether most of them are not saved. You know, this is not a Christian event. This is a secular event in the world. And then he even said he's Christian and acknowledged God. I really liked that, because I wasn't sure. A very famous guy, if I said his name, you'd know. He does the big seminars and all that. And he's doing a live one this week, and it just happened to pop up, and I clicked on it a little bit. I just watched it for a few minutes to see what he was talking about. And he said, uh, what do people call God or spirituality? He said, many people have different, you know. He says, me, but me, I'm a Christian. Ooh! I was like, okay, bro, thank you. Very nice. And he talked about God, and he's like saying it from the realm of, you know, he's glorious, he's the creator. I mean, come on, you know? But he was challenging people to say, to take assessment of their life in every area. Look at your life from one to ten. How do you rate yourself? I didn't get offended by that. I was like, and I, I said some numbers. He said, how's your financial life? Zero is like it's not good. Ten is like you're really over the top and you just feel like you're doing great. And then uh, emotionally, how are you doing? Physically and your health, how are you doing? What? You need to look at that. And then give yourself a number. If it's a four or a five or a six or an eight or a nine or a one or two or three, or hopefully it's not zero and ten. If it's ten, hey, you're the man, you're the boss. You're the man or the woman. But very few are walking in the realm of ten in their health, in their wealth, in their progress, in their emotional well-being, in their, in their relationships and all that. Some people have in their relationship life is jacked up. Some people in their financial life is jacked up. Some people, I mean, in a bad, it's, it's a, it's a, it's, it means bad, it's bad. Some, uh, some, you know, some people are emotionally, physically, financially, in well-being, in life, or really in bad shape. So how do you fix that? I'm going to tell you by the Holy Ghost two things. you got to work on it. I like the practical side. Successful spiritual warfare, the glory, the, the glory of God, the Lord himself, will grant us his protection. His protection is over us. And that's the theme, the title of this message, as the Holy Spirit commanded me. Yesterday, spoke to me audibly. You think, people wonder, does God speak to you all the time? You see me around like people that even know me, you, you know. You, you don't know my, the other side of my life. God speaks to me every, Almighty God speaks to me every single day without fail. There's not a day that I've ever had in my, in my life since I've been called by Jesus and baptized in the Holy Ghost that God's not spoken to me something. It's never happened. There's never been a day gone by where I didn't hear something. He didn't actually say something to me. There's a special grace because I'm, 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 he called me as his prophet. A prophet will hear from God all the time and then declare what he's saying. He said to me, talk about my protection. Wow. But I want to throw this in while I'm at it. Talk about progress in life. Protection is part of it. It's a big part of it. Oh, yes. And your financial life, your relationship life, your emotional life, your business life, your career, your well-being in life. It takes a lot of power to have it all working right. Then you have to make decisions. Now, I want to try to do this and put it into a practical formula one, two, three. In just a minute, then I just may wrap this for this session. Let me see how I can do it. Father, you have to help me because, you know, I don't have it written down. 
systematically. I wish I had it on a big screen, on a projector and PowerPoint written with the scripture and the graphics, but this is coming by this is coming fresh by the Holy Ghost. I'm just speaking spontaneously about the Holy Ghost. But I want to put this in a crystallized formula, like three or four things. Number one, you have to increase your righteousness. By doing what? Listening to the voice of God. I, I thought of this statement and I saw it somewhere. It said, if you want to keep going higher and climbing up, you have to keep obeying God severely and strongly. Whatever he says, whatever he wants you to do, you have to walk in that realm. Now, that's number one. And Matthew 6.33 says it very well. Seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things, good things will be added unto you. 6.32 said, the, what, talked about the wealth, the Gentiles, look at all these things. And then the scripture says here in Isaiah 62 that even the Gentiles will see your righteousness. Verse 2. Isaiah 62, verse 2. The Gentiles will see your righteousness and all kings will see your glory. And you will be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord will give you as a new name. And you shall also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord. My God. So the Gentiles seek and look after all these things. You know, like they do the net worth on people that are rich. You know, you can look up and see what kind of money somebody has or what they say they're worth which really, in some way, should be nobody's business, you know. But it's all out there. And, and guess what? They never do any reports or studies on someone that doesn't have anything. It's only the guy that has a lot. So that's, that's part of it. I mean, you'd rather be, like, on the net worth list somewhere uh, than not be there at all. Only some of these world leaders get to hide it. Like Putin or the guy from North Korea or the president of China, Red China. Uh, you wouldn't actually know that their net worth because it doesn't get listed somehow. <clears throat> the Rothschild family, the old Jewish family, they say is worth not even billions but into trillions and some people could think that's a myth, but really they ran whole systems of the world for many generations. So let me not get off too much over into that. But, uh, you know, you wouldn't know, you know, you see like one grandson, a raw child, he bought this big yacht and then some of his relatives were saying, hey, don't be, fl don't be flamboyant. He said, no, this wasn't a, a frivolous expenditure. This, this, was a, this was an investment. So we try to convince them it's an investment. And uh, anyway, but the young, the young one went to buy a big yacht worth hundreds of millions of dollars, you know. But the other ones, they won't do that. They'll be somewhere behind closed doors and you won't know, you know, that they're running the central banks, they're running governments, they're running, yeah, okay, okay. So I have to ask a question while I'm in the midst of this. Why is it always other people that don't even seem to know God or walk with God that are walking in all these kind of uh, grandiose scenarios financially? You look at all the buildings going up. It's, it's appalling. I mean, it's, it's good in one way. It looks good in one way, but it's disgusting in another. You have so many, like a property, a sliver of land that's in a valuable neighborhood, like the neighborhoods that I live in. And everything's going up. New building, new building, new building. Tell me the brother so-and-so or the sister so-and-so or the evangelist so-and-so or the pastor so-and-so or the bishop so-and-so or the doctor so-and-so or the pastor or the prophet so-and-so that's building one of those properties. None. That's disgusting. Isn't it? It's always some heathen It's always someone that's, you know, even of another religion, another persuasion, another. It's terrible. In the church, all they do is fight for position and fight each other. They seem to do that a lot. It's really bad. But God wants to take us past that because I'll tell you something. 
if you get blessed enough, you, you won't have to care about what people think about you. You'll be so busy and so swimming and flourishing and, and all that God has uh, given you to do and what he's given you to do it with, you won't care about what other people are thinking or saying or doing. And that's a good place to be. God wants us all to get there. You think of someone that's doing something meaningful in their daily life, that's producing something business-wise or, you know, in the realm of success in life, and then you look at someone that really doesn't know what to do. They don't do it. It's a big difference. So how can God, how can God get us to the place where uh, we could be doing all that? Increasing our righteousness. Some of our right, righteousness has just been given to me by the blood of Jesus. I know. Absolutely. We're made righteous, not by, our own, not by our own self, but by Him. But guess what? The more we do and the closer we get to God, and the more we worship Him in spirit and truth, and the more we, uh, you know, carry on with, uh, with His plans of action, we can uh, really increase our stature in life. So there's his protection. There's his grace. There's his blessing. There's his glory. There's his honor. Where is it upon people? When God honors a person, he gives them a lot of blessing. And how do we get it? By being in the secret place of the Most High, under the shadow of the Almighty, covered by his wings and his feathers. And then being a crown of glory in his hand. That's in Psalm 91. And then in Isaiah 62, being a crown of, verse, uh, uh, verse 3. Isaiah 62, verse 3. Becoming a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord. Wow. Is your life passionate and persevering enough that you can please God on that level? Now I'm going to pray for some, a couple of things here. Father, let me finish this three-point formula that I was talking about. Number one, increase your righteousness. Number two, um, work to become an example and an exhibit of the power and the grace of God and God's favor on your life that you can begin to succeed more. And then, practically speaking, look through your life and take assessment of things you need to focus on and change and then write down things. Some, some, some uh, uh, psychological thought, was, was so, I don't know what you'd say. What would you, what would you term, what, would you, what, what term would you give to that genre of thinking or Assessment, whatever, whatever it would be called. Psycho it's not psychology, the study of the mind. It's not study of life, whatever. Life principles, wisdom, whatever you want to call it. And uh, someone said, when you write down your goals clearly, it's like you've, you've, you've like solved half the problem of them happening because now you know what it is. And I heard this other voice echoing the same kind of thing. He said... And he had a mentor who was a very wise man who I really respect. And I'm not going to say all the names of these guys because it, it would just divert and take me, take me off. The, it would take too long to explain it all. But these are very successful centimillionaires. These are people worth, you know, going toward being billionaires. United, United States dollars, billionaires. You know, not, not, not men that are in any way weak or, or, or down in what they're doing. They've been diligent, they've worked, they've made a lot of money, they've become moguls, they've become leaders and trainers and teachers and sages and wise guys for people to uh, 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 transform their life by applying great principles that will bring you into success. And it was said, it was said, it was said this way. You have to assess yourself 
and then you have to apply yourself, and then you have to write everything down. And watch this now, watch this now. Here's the third, the third point of it. You need to know exactly what to do and why you're doing it. You know something, the how, I want to tell you something here. The how, and I love how the Holy Ghost is intertwining laws of success with, with this message about protection and whatever you want to call it. The, uh, the how you don't have to worry about so much. It'll work itself out. What you need to do is, is to know is what. What do I want to do and why do I want to do it? And when, you ha- when your why is loud and big, why, why, why? I have to do it because of this. This is the reason I need this. Then that this that you're looking for, that thing that you're looking for, this has to happen. The this that needs to happen will begin to happen. Why? Because your why is so loud. You're like, it has to happen. You know? Are you hearing God's servant here? It has to happen. And then what is it all? What is it all? Uh, you know, they say boil down to. I hate that. What are you boiling down? What does it mean? What is it all? Uh, what's the summation of it all? What's the end of the matter? That the will of God gets done. That the mission that he's given us gets accomplished. Where is it? In the secret place of the Most High. Psalm 91. Isn't it amazing that the chapter that talks about how the arrows of the wicked and all that will be stopped and all that, you know, everything will be quenched. No evil can befall you. Nothing can harm you. Luke ten nineteen says, nothing shall by any means hurt you. You have authority and power to tread on serpents and scorpions. How, and you crush everything evil under your feet. How do you do that unless you're full of the Holy Ghost? In these last days, I have to give an admonition here. We need to be filled with God's power and presence. Foramashala. We need to ask God for another baptism in the Holy Ghost. Someone that's filled with the Holy Ghost becomes brilliant. There's a sweet fragrance on your life. There's a beauty in the spirit that's upon such a one. That is, it, it is not there when someone else doesn't have the presence of God. The presence of God is always in order, always refreshing, always needed, always desired, no matter who the vessel no matter what the situation, no matter where we are or not, wherever we are, the presence of God is always that, that essence of, of power and glory that makes everything wonderful. It makes everything work, causes everything to seem nice and wonderful and lovely. As Nebuchadnezzar looked in his dream that he had and saw the tree, and saw its leaves, and saw the animals, and saw the birds, and saw the fruits coming off, and the leaves were lovely, he said. Everything was beautiful, it was powerful, it was a giver of life, and everything on the earth was fed by this beautiful tree. But then because of the wickedness of man, the watchers and the voice of the Lord came by the angels and says, cut it down. And Nebuchadnezzar was chased away from the glory of this tree, which Belteshazzar, Daniel said, was him in his kingdom, in his glory, taken away, and then now he's bowing down, eating grass, chewing on grass like, like an ox, like a cow, like a water buffalo, like a goat, like a sheep, like a cow. Imagine that. And then there's a story about the years of prosperity and the years of famine, you know? America this year, right now this month, has had the coldest weather in the history. I think, I think it's been, uh, there was a great blizzard in 1969. I remember it because I was in New York and I looked out my window and it looked like I was on another planet. There was like four or five feet of snow, or five or six feet of snow, that high. And everything was covered and nobody could move. Even the cars, you couldn't see the cars anymore. The snow covered the cars. Parked on the street, you, there was snow was so high in some places you couldn't see cars parked anymore. They were completely submerged under the snow. That happened in the snowstorm of 1969. What was 69? The 60s was the sexual revolution. 
the drug revolution in America, and maybe it brought judgment. In the last year of the 60s, 69, this great blizzard hit, hit the, north, the, north, the Northeast and just wiped out, stopped life uh, as it was. People died, froze, things, I mean, it was horrible. You couldn't leave the house, you looked out, you couldn't walk. You, how could you walk in five feet of snow? Everybody was like in, you know, was it judgment? Now look, it could have been. Now, now look at this now. This right now, the coldest ever. I have a friend that just flew to America. They were they're arriving in America right now as we speak. And they've come from a beautiful tropical warm weather uh, over here to walk into sub-freezing uh, temperatures over there. And this is like in the southern part of America. Not, though, not all the way down the tropics in Florida not, or Louisiana, not that far, but like up a little bit, like Atlanta, you know. And then you go up in the northern parts of the city. It's like below zero. Everything's freezing. Everything's, it, you know, it, but look at the evil that's going on in America. Look what these buffoons are doing in government. It's unbelievable. And it, it brought that whole thing. So righteousness exalts a nation, but sins are reproach to any people. And when the godly are in, in leadership, the righteous flourish. But when the wicked are in, in power, uh, the people mourn and moan and suffer. And that, we really see that's happening now. It happened in Nebuchadnezzar's day. It's happening in America in our day under these buffoons in government. We're praying for the election that's coming up in November 2024, that the right thing happens. And, you know, we can say a lot about that. And that will turn things around. It just, you know, if it doesn't happen, I think the world as we know it is going off the rails. I'd rather not, that not happen because I, 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 I have a good uh, decade's worth of time to go to do the will of God. I don't want it all to end now. You know? Let me tell you something. Jesus doesn't need us in heaven. God doesn't need us there, you know? A flower picked from the field, a rose from the garden, you know, for the Lord in heaven we are. No, that's stupidity. He wants us to be working here. <clears throat> and he wants things that are evil that are going on, that the devil and his ugly friends and the Luciferians are planning. He wants to turn it back. So God's protection will be upon us personally, but it needs to be upon us corporately and even as a nation, even as societies and even as People in the whole world, we need to turn back evil and put it back, send it back to the abyss. You know, let me tell you something about the power of the prophetic voice. It can send someone to the abyss. You think, oh, you know, the prophet, oh, what can he tell me? You know, oh, it's just a man or whatever. Some people think they're so deluded. They think they can walk around and act like criminals and hurt good people. Proverbs 13, 17, 13 is clear. If you do evil to a good person, evil will never leave you. That's a, a command from Scripture. So guess what? We know that the criminals and the wicked, they're getting eaten alive. <clears throat> and we just, we just want to hear about it. We just want to hear it back. People that have done wrong, done people wrong and dirty, and done criminal things against the elect. Oh, it's not good for them. And we know it how, by the scripture. We don't even need the testimony of the witness back. We know it's happening. But uh, it ought not to be. So people chose to oppose somebody good, do some evil things to them, stress them out, steal from them, lie to them, cheat them, con them. Death and destruction is upon the one that's done that. And it's released again. The prophetic voice, you think it's not powerful. It can send someone straight to the abyss. Oh, yes. Don't make me get tempted to tell you the names or write down a list of the names of people that are dead in my wake that have messed with us. They're, they're dead and buried. And some people that think they're slick, whatever, they'll be dead and gone a long time, and I'll still be, and I still am, operating. And we want time to do that, so we want righteousness to be flourishing in the earth. So a personal command from the mind of God would tell us this. 
The secret place is my will. The shadow of the Almighty is being next to me. Being a crown of glory in my hand means you're close. Being under the shadow of my wings. <laughs> oh, I am anointed. I tell you, I'm anointed. I, it's frightening. It really is. I am anointed. Me. Thomas Manton IV. I am anointed. My Jesus. This message, where did it come from? Through the vessel by the Holy Ghost. Let's lift our hands. Oh, my God. You know, I've had a long day. I didn't sleep last night. Been dealing with a lot of things, tired. You know, and yet this comes like this. I am anointed. <laughs> Isaiah 60 talked about the glory coming upon you. And... All kinds of blessings happening, right? Being under the shadow of the Almighty and having his wings cover us, his feathers like of a bird, of a, a big bird, like spread his, and it means we're close to the one with the wings. Now you seeing that. So the practical thing, number one, get into all this. Increase your righteousness. Increase your obedience to God. Listen to his voice. Get close to him. Have a, a, a depth of relationship with the Holy Spirit. Where his presence and his glory, he said, even his light and his glory will be seen upon you. In Isaiah 60. Now also in Isaiah 62, verse 2, the Gentiles will see your righteousness and all kings your glory. They'll all see it. What a privilege. And what an important thing. And then take assessment of your life. And don't be afraid to say from one to ten, how am I doing? And take uh, like ten different categories. My health, my wealth, my relationships, my emotions, my, my career, my life, my progress. Where am I at in the realm of obedience to God and what he wants to do? Or, or, or whatever I actually want to do with my life to succeed greatly. Then the next point is, what am, I, what am I wanting to do? What does God want me to do? All right? And then what do I want to do? And then why do I want to do it? And make those very loud and accentuated. And then the what, the who, the where, the when will be now. The where is the place where, we'll, where, where we have to find the people, you know, and I keep saying this, prophetically, that the best people are coming to us. Yes, it's like that. Why? For the will of God to be done. And I want to tell you this. It's, a very, it's kind of a, a very uh, sobering statement. It's challenging in one hand. It's sad in another. It's glorious in another. In another way, the people that you have, good or bad, everything rises and falls on leadership. Everything rises and falls upon the people in your environment. You have good, brilliant people, you can get everything done. You have dull people, you can't get anything done, almost. So the gift of God to match uh, uh, the realm of righteousness that you're walking with him, he'll give you the best of the best. And his protection is assured, but we must be in the plan and the will of God. Father, I've delivered this as you wanted me to. This is amazing. We thank you, Lord Jesus, we, that you... You're, you're promoting your people. I love what, is, what you said in John 15. <clears throat> you said, I no longer call you servants, but I call you my friends. A friend of God. Abraham was a friend of God. Ro Moses was close to him and spoke to him like a, as a friend, as a man speaks to a friend face to face. Abraham was in the presence of God like that. Elijah was in the presence of God like that. What are we doing? I'm doing it, and I want you to do it too. So a personal command for blessing, that was, because this is the season, and I say this prophetically, this is the theme for the, for the year as well. The Lord says, I'm going to manifest my promises to you personally. <clears throat> I'm also going to judge the wicked and cut them down. Don't worry about that, they're going down. And 
it's a time where righteousness is going to increase and things are going to change for the better. The Lord said everything's going to change for the better. It has to. Some, in some ways, it doesn't seem like it has yet in a lot of scenarios. But guess what? It's going to. Because Why? Because the Lord said so. And the money's coming, and the blessings are coming, and the treasures are coming. They're there. Watch. I'm going to remember the day when I had conversations with a couple of supposed friends about some issues, even financially or whatever. When it's all long sorted and so far beyond in the realm of flesh, way beyond they could even try to attain to. And I'll just laugh and say, you know, I told you. I told you so. How many times did I say it? How many times did I speak it prophetically? How many messages have you heard me saying it? How many times have I said to you personally that the money, the blessing of the Lord is coming to us and making us rich? Why? So we can accomplish his, his work. Friday night I saw, I was looking at the, and this message will be coming out, I think it's live again on YouTube now. I'll click that to switch it on after I get off here, and you can watch it. Go to my YouTube channel. It's called The Money Is Coming, Volume 66. It'll be live tonight, within some minutes from now. We'll make sure it's live. The live version uh that I recorded on Friday. We're going to put that out. We're also going to edit, edit it again and you know, get it ready for the other platforms. But the YouTube will be live uh, from a few minutes from now. You can watch that. At least I don't want to make people wait because the edited version may take you know, some hours to finish, but I'm going to make sure that version of it's out. And the Lord spoke some amazing. I, I was looking at the, these bars of gold that I had in the, in the virtual studio realm. And I, and I began to see a vision of faces of people, multitudes of people on the faces of the gold bars. You watch, watch that message when I get into that. What a realm. And the Lord reminded me to talk about the vision of the gold coins when I had a heavenly, I was taken to a heavenly place in the, and part of the vision, the Lord threw gold coins, thousands of gold coins at my feet to the point with such force that the coins hitting your your, your feet could break the bones and cut the skin. You know, it didn't happen because it was in the heavenly realm. You didn't get hurt. But I felt that things came and it's like they went through me. They went all around. I was covered in them. The Lord says, you need this. I know. It's like he was in a hurry to tell me about his plan. But he said, here, take it. You need this. Take it. Like, I know you want this. It's like he was, he was in a hurry to just, he said it very brashly like that. Just take it. It's yours. You need it. I was like, well, thank you. Correct. But what's, what was on his heart was his plan. So when I was looking at the gold in the, in the, in the virtual reality realm, I, was see, I began to see faces of people. These treasures will help us reach the ends of the earth with the gospel and reach people with television broadcasts and media. And it takes money, it takes help, it takes people, it takes systems, it takes equipment, it takes operations. And God is giving that all to us in Jesus' name. You as a partner, at, you know, the, I, I, like, I, like, I love what Elijah said to Elisha. If you see me when, you, when I go up, the mantle can also touch you and you'll be blessed and empowered. There's something about sowing into a certain grace, sowing into a certain anointing. There are people that, you know, I've never seen an offering from you. Even people around. You're not supposed to just receive everything all the time. You're supposed to plant something. Begin to do that from today. I don't care if it's a small thing or a part of what you got or what you get. Plant it and sow into it. Sow into the grace. Because you need it. So obviously, obviously you need it. You need the harvest. You need the blessing. So someone's receiving, you know. I watched one person one time. I was sending them something, and they were always sending something back. And then one day they stopped. And then after that, I didn't see really the blessing flowing with them. <clears throat> it's real. We need to sow. I'm going to sow something tonight. I have to. I have to. I'm just praying. 
I'm praying about the exact uh, figure and the way to do it, but I'm going to do it tonight. You have to always keep giving. Your giving will determine your living. You know, the richest man in, in American ministry is said to be Kenneth Copeland. And he says that. He said, I don't, I don't live by my receiving, I live by my giving. Well, then, and then I receive. I make a living by my giving. I heard another man of God, a friend of mine in America. God's really raising him up. Powerful, powerful man of God. And now he's walking in the millions of dollars. I think he's... Uh, I think he's taking it upwards of $3 million a month now. $3 million. It's going to four, I think. $3 million a month. What if it gets soon to a million dollars a week? Where did that money come from? Someone said, oh, he's lucky. He's just special. No, he's a crazy giver. He says, the people that give to our ministry, we don't even, I don't even look at their names or gauge who they are. He said, what I focus on is my giving. I focus on my giving. My giving. I focus on my giving. <laughs> and he said, when I, when I obey God and I, I pour out liberally, it just all comes back. Multiply. Everybody needs to do that. I'm reminded of what Mike Murdoch said, Dr. Mike Murdoch said, my dear friend. He said, I wouldn't think of having a non-tither on my staff. Wow. This is something we need to look at. The book is available. Prophetic Keys to Successful Living. You need a copy of this. And the expanded edition of The Laws of Success will be finished uh, in a few days. That'll be coming out. Uh, we have it in digital copy already, though, both of these. And also The Benefits of Excellence. I don't have it right in front of me right here. It's also available in digital format that people can get. Uh, contact us. Just send us a note that uh, just write book. Or the book, Laws of Success, Prophetic Keys of Successful Living, or the Benefits of Excellence, you'd like to. I'm getting a lot, I'm getting requests for those. People saying, how can we purchase them? How can we get them? So just write a message and, uh, uh, with the word book, and we'll get back to you and explain to you how you can, how you can get these. But I want everybody to sow a seed today. I want everybody to start sowing. I'm not concerned as much about the amount as I am the realm of obedience. That you're doing something and then make it your lifestyle. And God, what God said in his word, that he will increase the person who's giving. Even Proverbs 11.25 said the generous person will become like a well-watered garden. That's not a lie. That's not a story. That's not a fairy tale. It's real. And it happens like that. This friend, this friend in America, he, uh, he went to a place that's a very uh, a famous, a famous minister who had him come uh, to speak. And uh, they were asking him about <clears throat> his honorarium. And there's something about the conference that he just felt led to, to go to speak there. They had invited him, of course, but he, he could have refused to go. But he, he, uh, he went and he said... I, I don't want anything. I don't want anything for coming. And they tried to they tried to give him something and he refused. And they said, What's your honorarium? I don't have one. He said, What can we give you? How can we bless you? No, you can't. I don't I'm not gonna. And while he was there, uh deciding to receive no offering, for whatever reason he did it, either you know, under divine instruction or something about what they were working on in the conference, something to do with helping people. He wanted to 
just uh, so into that and not take anything for, for speaking. And uh, a person wa- walked up to him and gave him a check. He put it in his pocket. When, he didn't look at it, but when he opened it up, it was, it was big. It was like major five figures in dollars, like $50,000 or something like that. Amen, or close to it. Could you imagine, you know, here, by the way, here's something for you. You know, they just slipped him a piece of paper. It was a check, and it was like, oh, like, like around $50,000. When he said he wasn't receiving anything, God still pushed something in his hand through someone anyway. You can't beat God giving. Even the fact that he said, I wasn't going to receive anything here, that was also a seed. Then he was also given a private jet to use for free. He said, I wonder which seed, which thing I gave to do, which act of righteousness I did in giving that pushed this thing as a harvest back to me. And a lot of people don't know about this. They just live to take, 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 take. They never give. And uh, it's really bad. And that, what about the curse upon a nation when God said in Malachi 3? Malachi 3, you're cursed, even this whole nation. Why? Because you've robbed me. And the people said, we robbed you? Really? Where? When? How did we do that? He said, in tithes and offerings. Tithes and offerings. Even this whole nation. Therefore, you're cursed with a curse. A financial curse was released because of your lack of gratitude and lack of sowing and reaping. Lack of sowing so you would reap. You start out with something, you sow the seed, and then you reap the harvest. That whole process does not happen if you're not, if you're not working with it. So the Holy Ghost is, is, is on it again, speaking about it again. Everybody, you need to sow a seed right now by M-Pesa, by PayPal, or by however you're going to do it, SendWave, or uh, if someone happens to see me in person, you can just uh, stick it in my hand. I don't know. If you need bank details to send something more, more sizable or substantial, you can use that. Western Union, there's a mobile wallet that even goes to a thing called M-Pesa. And you can get the number from my uh, the headings of the post. You can get that information. But if you like more details on that and bank details or how to send something, just send me a... Uh, a DM, a direct message, or WhatsApp to the number that's on the screen. And I'll be praying for you to be blessed. That's how it works. When you give, when you sow, you're going to reap. Increase your righteousness by giving. Increase your right. Now, 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 now let, me, let me clarify that. Doctrinally speaking, righteousness was, righteousness was given when we received the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about in functional work that produces results. If you do a certain job, you're going to get a certain reward. This is how this pans out. And nobody could deny this fact. The diligent hand, the Bible says, makes rich, but the slack hand makes the want. So you can work in the realm of righteousness to cause blessings to come to you. And there's things that if you don't do them, you're not going to get the result. Then you wonder why things are the way they are. People wonder why they are struggling, why they're impoverished, you know. Some things come from adverse situations that are going on in the realm of the spirit or in the realm of... But then there has to come a, a redirect, a reset, and get into the functionality of what God is leading, and then that's going to lead to abundance. There is this thing the scripture says that tends to increase, tends to abundance. (laughs) Jesus even said 30, 60, and 100 fold. And Isaiah 60, 22, and Isaiah, Deuteronomy 111 talks about a thousand times increase. A little one will become like a thousand, Isaiah 60, 22. Uh, Deuteronomy 111, I'll make you a thousand times more, the Lord says. Can you imagine? 
Now, you, you, do what, you do what you want with verses like that. But for myself, I take them literally and say, those promises belong to me in Jesus' name. Look for ways to give. Take something, even if it seems inconvenient, and sow it. And really, you won't miss it because, you know, who knows, even the next hour, even the next day, something will come right back to you. I see that happen all the time. I don't worry about uh, when I'm giving. I don't worry about when I look at things or where they are in the realm of numbers because they just keep replenishing themselves. Why? Because I'm in the plan of God. I'm obeying what he wants me to be doing. And uh, the provision is there, but also we keep sowing, keep tithing, keep giving, and the increase comes back. Take action on this, my friend, because you need to be blessed. In this day and hour, it seems that everybody's complaining about economic situations, uh, all kinds of you know, oppressions, and you're wondering about governments, you're wondering about business industries and societies and what's going on everywhere, even in the church, and you wonder why things are a certain way. But you know what? You don't have to live by that economy. You can make your own economy by operating and giving and living according to the word of God. Money is everywhere. Money is prevalent. Someone said there's no money. That's the stupidest thing I ever said. There's money everywhere. It's just in the wrong hands. And then what he say in Isaiah 60, 62 verse 2 and 3? The, the Gentiles will see your righteousness and all kings will see your glory. Why? Because you'll be blessed. So how do you do it? Matthew 6.32 the Gentiles seek and they look at, at what people have in the realm of material things. But Jesus said, you want those things? Yes, of course you know. Of course you want them and of course you need them. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all these other things are going to be added unto you. And Jesus said, you want to, you want to receive, give, Luke 6, 38, and then it will be given to you seven times with different kinds of harvest back. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give in your bosom at the same measure that you measure out the same measure be measured back to you again. Matthew 7, 7, the next chapter goes on to say, Ask, seek, and knock. Ask, and it will be given. Seek, and you'll find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. What? Because that, Matthew 7, 7, comes after Luke 6, 38. Look at it in, six, look at Scripture in succession in the realm of taking action. You gave, you, you said give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, press down, shake it together, running over. Shall men give in your bosom in the same measure you measure out, the same measure be measured back to you again. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give to you, right? And at the measure you're giving out, it'll be given back to you again. And then after that, ask, seek, and knock. People think this is frivolous. It's just going to happen any old way. You know, the old Philippians 4.19. Philippians 4.19 was a promise for the Philippians who gave more than anybody. And Paul didn't say, you're God. It's just going to happen anyway, by the grace or whatever. No, he said, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Why? Because you communicated with me and helped me more than anybody else ever did. And therefore, I'm going to release a blessing upon you. And God's going to honor my apostolic and prophetic decree over you. And you're going to see the hand and the blessing of God coming. Be generous. Be a giver. I'm expecting to hear from many of you and some that I've not seen anything from. It's time for you to start today upon this prophetic admonition and start to do it. I don't, I'm not looking at the amount. It's the percentage. It's the system of you being a giver that's going to unlock new things for you. By the way, you can't give a million if you don't have it. If you have a thousand, to give a thousand, you only have to have a thousand. But you can't give a million if you have a thousand. So start where you are. If you have a hundred, it's a hundred that you can give. Hello. If it's 500 that you have, it's 500 you can give. 
or 400 keep the, and keep the 100. But do something. Start the wheel rolling. Start the ball rolling. Start the wheel to be turned into motion and you start to move forward. And then step out in faith and start to move in the things that God wants done. Father, I thank you for giving us fresh energy. I heard this real giant businessman say this. He said, I figured out something, what I had to, what I had to get. And he, said, even, he even said what I asked God for. I like that. And this is a man, this, he's teaching a secular, in a secular arena. And he said that. He said, he said, um, I figured out what I needed most was energy. <laughs> Woo! I want to add something to it. Direction. You can, uh, you can have resources. You can have something good. I, I'm jealous of a, uh, I'm, sometimes you can feel jealous of a time and a season that you have when things are really very, very flush and very easy and very luxurious and comfortable and you had a lot going on. And then you go through something and then there's, there's warfare and things shift a bit, you know, uh, without going into so many details. Terrible. And you're like, I remember when I, when I had that. But at that time, my mind, I, I didn't have it set what I, exactly what I wanted to do enough, but now I do. More than, more than them. I mean, in huge ways. So God, there was resources, but the resources that, you know, were there then need to be here now. And the Lord says, the Lord says this. Don't fret yourself. Trust in me. Be still and know that I'm God. For I'm bringing them forth. I'm bringing things forth to you, says the Lord. You're going to begin to see my hand of favor. Just obey me. Just work with my principles. Stay the course. Lord, you spoke that to me a few weeks ago. To me, it was a, a no-brainer and a what they call it, a no-hitter? I don't know what they call that. The inning when the guy he couldn't hit the ball or whatever. It's just like the, the pitcher was just thrown perfectly. And nobody could, nobody could uh, withstand the, the speed or the accuracy or the power of the way he was throwing the ball. It's like, to me, I'm in the game, and I, I would never come out of it. So, like, I wonder why God said that to me so emphatically. He said, son, I'm going to bless you in so many ways. Stay the course. Stay with it. Stay faithful. Keep going. I'm like, oh, what, am I, what else would I do? You know, to me, it's like a settled fact. The word quit is not in me. It doesn't compute. But none, nevertheless, God spoke. So we need to just keep going. Now, I think the Lord was challenging my faith, me in the realm of, using more faith to do things, but I heard this man say this brilliant thing, and I really like it. It's a key. Energy. You don't just need the thought, the plan, the desire. You need the energy to do it. Oh, wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that powerful? Father, energize us where we never feel physically tired or emotionally tired or any obstacle to be in our way or damaged in any way. Remove all pain out of us, physically, emotionally, spirit, in any way. Remove any disappointment out of us, bitterness or sadness about anything. Take it out of us and give us energy to produce I heard of old men, old men that reached their 80s and they were still going full speed. Kenneth Hagin, Lester Summerall, guys like that. Nobody could catch up with them. Even Benny Hinn, you know, Benny Hinn was, was like cashing it in, man. He was saying, I'm done, I don't want to travel anymore. I'm, he was, I think he, he's wondering if he's ready to just end, end, end the life, you know, take off. I want, you know, it kind of was like that. 
Now you see him here, you see him there, like there's a new wind blowing. Why did it happen? Because he's God's servant. Some people, as crazy as they can be, as mixed up as they can get over issues along the journey, they're still, the, the hand and the touch and the call of God is upon them. And uh, it's amazing. I bet people are looking at him go, wow. We don't even know if we can keep up with him. Yet he's a man. He's, he's, I think he's turning 70 years old this year, if he's not already. And I, I remember him saying, he said, he said he felt like the Lord, I, I don't know the Lord, he says the Lord said. I'm not going to get into his business, Benny. In. But he said something about, he had these two numbers, like 69 and 74. Well, guess what? He's already 69. So I guess it wasn't then, and now it seems like there's some some new wind blowing upon uh, on him to, to do more in ministry. So is it 74? Is it beyond that? 74 is a short time away, if that's right. It's only five years from now for him. We don't want to go that fast. We want to live a long time. That's why it's important that righteousness is done in our life each, each, as each individual, and then it becomes more prevalent in society that we can push back the devil from all of his evil works because the time is not yet. Jesus said in Matthew 24, he said, when you see these signs of things happening that are adverse, that, like, that are going on, I don't want to take time to get into it. You know, you know what they are, what's going on in our crazy world these days. He said, but the end is not yet. He said, it's the beginning of sorrows, but the end is not yet. Occupy until I come. Take over until I come. Luke 10, 19. Tread upon evil and crush it under your feet and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Psalm 91. Dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Be under the shadow of his wings. Oh my God. Karampo shalan delese kala shelehase machalasa teresan delese kaitusu. Oh, yes. Isaiah 62, 2 and 3 again. Let me be a crown of glory in your own hand, Lord, close to you. And this is the word of the Lord tonight. Are you blessed? It's time to get closer to Him. Listen to Him. But activate all these principles. Assess your life. Take steps of action. Be a giver. First a tither and then a giver. Settle that today. And as you are giving, you become a partner of the ministry here. And I'm thrilled to see that. And I'm praying for your blessing in Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Manton IV. We'll see you on the next broadcast. The Lord bless you. Keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. Give you his peace and his power and his prosperity. It's all there for us. And this is the day when the judgment is coming against the wicked to cleanse the land and cleanse your world personally. And then to see the promises in manifestation coming to us. In Jesus' name. The ways to give are on the screen. Take advantage of it. The Lord bless you. Look forward to hearing from you. I am praying for you. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119, 105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, God has sent prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10:41. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering, you can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed.